Today is Monday, November the 6th, 2023. I am in Jacksonville, Arkansas, and the time is approximately 5.25 p.m. Y'all, I'm going to fry up some chicken. I have this pack of Sanderson Farms chicken legs. I haven't fried chicken in so long. Every time I make chicken, it is, um, every time I make chicken, it is mainly um, like baked or boiled chicken, which I really like to make it that way. But this time I'm going to wash this and, I'm, and I'll be right back. And before I come back, y'all, because I'm going to take it out the pack, um, I'm going to be using several seasonings. I'll be coming in with, um, that's the Great Value brand seasoning salt. I'll be using a little bit of the Creole as well, some garlic powder, some orchard seasoning, a little chili powder, maybe a little hint of ground cinnamon, just a little bit. We're not making cinnamon chicken, but just a little bit. Some black pepper and Hold on. In addition to the McCormick black pepper, I'll be using um, just a little bit of the red pepper, not much. I will also be using some of the Great Value All Purpose Flour. And I will be adding just a little bit of cornstarch to the flour mixture to create a slightly crunchy batter, or at least a more crunchy or batter. I will also be blending with the flour some of the chicken, the chicken hot and spicy uh, breading mix. This hot and spicy chicken breading is made from Andes. They're, they are located there in St. Louis, Missouri. Now this is open because I actually added just a little bit. As you can see, the package is just about full. I added a little bit to the uh, fried fish seasoning fry and it just made it like really spicy and tasty. And I actually add a little bit to some vegetables, but that's the story for another day. Let me get started. And before I get started, I'm gonna mix this stuff up in a Ziploc bag, along with the seasonings, one moment. And before I begin mixing this stuff, y'all, I have just took a bowl out. I'm gonna be using some milk. Y'all, I have here some cooking oil that it's already hot and I just lowered it so it don't get like the burntness on it. And for best results, you wanna use buttermilk and try to soak it, but this is what I have. I'm gonna use whole milk. And I'm just gonna pour some here in the bowl. Now typically you would um, traditionally have like an egg and milk mixture, you know, where you crack an egg and put it in here. But um, I'm just gonna go along with the milk for now. Y'all be sure to wash your chicken. I have removed the chicken from the pack and I took it on out to the trash can. Y'all along, you know, I tied it down in a plastic bag and took it out to be dumped because y'all, if you look at the packaging, um, when that blood dries on the, on the package and that pad, you don't want that in your home. And you, and you definitely want to wash your chicken very well. You want to wash this really well. I'm just run, running some cool water over it. My sink is clean because I have like, you know, bleach detergent solution that I clean it with and stuff. But I still, you know, want to be careful. You still want to be careful. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, I believe. 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven chicken legs. Y'all, I have seasoned my chicken. The chicken primarily have this Walmart Great Value seasoning salt, but for directly on the chicken, season both sides. In here, in this milk mixture, I put these following seasoning, chili powder, garlic powder. Um, I gotta add some black pepper. I gotta add the Tabasco sauce. I'm gonna add a few drops of this. And, cause this is gonna be like a hot and spicy chicken, if you will. So I have the Tabasco sauce. You can use Louisiana hot sauce or your hot sauce of your choice. Be careful, cause this is very, very, this is very peppery, super hot. Um, I have red pepper, the cayenne powdered red pepper. This is the grounded one. I have poultry seasoning. I put in like a good amount of poultry seasoning, as you can see it on top of the milk. I also added um, ground cinnamon, not to the milk, but directly to the flour. Do not put this in the milk, put it directly in the flour. It just gives it a, without it making it taste cinnamon, just makes it the flour mixture richer. And of course, this milk is loaded with the Tony's Creole seasoning. And so it's the flour mixture. <clears throat> so I'm gonna go ahead and open the Tabasco sauce. Let me move this out of the way from the camera. Okay. And I'm just gonna go ahead and put in, give it a smell, and just put in a few drops. You don't take a lot of this stuff, y'all. Tabasco. I do have regular hot sauce, but I never use this, so I'd rather use it for fried chicken. I want to point out that with the poultry seasoning, I added a, like a good heaping teaspoon. Because you know that flavor that you get, like if you ever go to Kentucky Fried Chicken, KFC, uh, form, actually known as KFC, um, it was formerly known as Kentucky Fried Chicken. They, that original recipe and even the crispy has uh, some element of poultry seasoning. You can taste it in the dish. So you, if you want to have that real fried chicken, grind, you know, like genuine flavor, always make sure you put in some poultry seasoning as well with the other, as along with the other seasonings. Right here in this bag, I have, in a Ziploc bag, I have flour in here. And I'm gonna go ahead and add some cornstarch and the hot and spicy, Andy's hot and spicy chicken breading. I have added a quarter cup, that's like one fourth cup, or roughly about three heaping tablespoons of cornstarch to the flour mixture and the Andes chicken breading mix. And with the Andes, I only added about a half a cup of Andes hot and spicy chicken breading. Now you can use all of that if you prefer, but I like to just add it in with my flour. Let me give this a mix. Now that my seasonings have been well incorporated in the flour mixture, I am going to begin to Um, I'm just going to take my finger. I can use a spoon or something. I'm just going to give that a stir. That's the mixture, the milk mixture, where you, you can see the rich seasonings in it. So I'm actually going to just take this chicken and put it in the flour. I'm going to double dip. Now that I have transported my chicken into the bag of flour, I'm going to shake it. Be right back. The chicken is cut, the seasoned chicken legs is inside of this Ziploc bag. It is well coated, but I need to take it out and dip it into the milk mixture. You see how nice that look? Just before I put, I'm going to take it out now and put it, 
putting in the bowl of milk, the flour check in one moment. Y'all, I don't have a camera hand, like a handstand, so um, I have to pause in between what I'm showing you. I cannot get all of the chicken legs into this bowl of milk mixture, so what I'm going to do is do like three at a time, and I'm going to roll this in the seasoned milk. So make sure that every element is, and be sure when you're heating up your cooking oil, like in a cast iron skillet, that you lower the temperature. It's because, see, it's already hot. And so you just want to lower the temperature so that it doesn't, um, so that it doesn't burn. You don't want your chicken to have like a, go into burning cooking oil. So see how I'm just simply turning this? See how simple that is? Now just watch. I'm gonna put this back in the Ziploc bag and I'm gonna give it a shake and then I'm gonna go ahead and put it, drop it on into the cooking oil. And so you can, um, you see, I don't have no eggs in here. You know, you see, I know you all have seen where people take an egg and put it in there, but I'm going with seasoned milk. Let me show you, I wanna keep it as natural as possible. This is part two of the hot and spicy fried chicken. Um, using Andy's hot and spicy mix along with some cornstarch and other ingredients. Y'all, the video cut off, part one cut off because I have to try to maneuver. Right here, I have took the dipped, the chicken, three pieces of chicken that was dipped in the milk mixture and I have put it back into the flour. I'm gonna give this a shake and transport it on into the cooking oil. I wanted to get everything on one video, but it didn't happen like that. Now on these first three, I just dipped it in the milk one time, okay? And then put it, I put it in the flour, then dipped it in, the, in this seasoned milk mixture and put it back in the flour and dipped it one time. But this one, the second batch is going to be double dipped. Here, I have four pieces of chicken legs remaining, and I will be double dipping it, and I'll show you what I mean, one moment. And just like on the first video, I used um, these ingredients, poultry seasoning, grounded red pepper, now you wanna use a good heaping teaspoon or so of poultry seasoning so you can get that KFC taste. Um, similar to KFC and what you find at other chicken restaurants. Um, the cinnamon, I added uh, about a teaspoon only to the flour only, not to the milk mixture. And then I added garlic powder to both the, uh, the flour and all the rest of the ingredients were added to the flour and milk mixture, except the cinnamon and then the black pepper, which is up here. I added a lot of black pepper to the flour mixture and I actually seasoned the chicken itself with great value seasoning salt. While the chicken is frying, the first batch, watch how I will take the remaining chickens, legs here, and put them, just roll them around in the milk. And I'm going to do all of them like that. Just roll them around in the milk. Submerge even the tail in. Submerge the tail of this one. Wish I had a cameraman. That, you know. Believe me, when people pay a cameraman that knows how to film, not that I don't know how to film, but I'm saying, you know what I mean. Um, they, it's really worth the investment. It helps to kick the content up a notch. You see how pretty the spices are, the seasonings? So you want to make sure that you season every element. Look at all of that good seasoning. You can see all of that. And so I've rem removed the last one here, and I'm just rolling it in the milk mixture. Y'all, for better results, this is going to be good no matter what, but you can use buttermilk. And make sure that if you use buttermilk that you wash that chicken really well and you marinate it in the buttermilk for anywhere between three to four hours. 
or you can do overnight if you'd like, but I'm just saying. <clears throat> I'm going to have to lower the temperature. I don't want this to cook too fast. Oh, never mind my hands here, but i got to turn that down as such. All right. You see, I can tell it's browning, and it shouldn't. I, I, it's supposed to brown, but I don't want it to cook so fast that the inside is not done and the outside be cooked, okay? So let me let me flip this over using my pitchfork. So I lowered it down to low. And there's a method that you can use where you actually can steam this stuff up. See how pretty that looks already? Alright, now back to this one. Let me transport it into pour it into the bag. Be right back. The chicken is well coated and I'm going to um, put it back. I have dipped it in the milk and dipped it in the flour and now I'm going to, actually I put it in the flour, the milk, and now I'm going to put it back in the milk. Let's just leave it as that's that, just one moment. I'm going to re-dip this. This is the batch, second batch is going to be double coated with the milk mixture. So it's already been put in milk mixture and re-floured. Now I'm going to put it in the milk mixture again. Okay. I'm going for the double coating of milk. Let's see, this is cooking up just fine. Everything is looking great. Got to get a deep fryer around here. These are some fat Sanderson form. I use Sanderson form chicken legs, you guys, not Tyson. And I'm so glad that Cash Saver Edwards have started carrying Sanderson Form chicken. That makes a big difference. I will be buying because Sanderson Form have, have excellent quality. They have excellent quality chicken. So, y'all look at that. And it's thick. I can feel the thickness of it because it already, you know, been dipped before in the milk mixture. So this is the second time around, guys. Now I'm going to take this well-coated. You need more better on you. There we go. So I'm going to take this coated milk mixture. I'm going to blend it better off camera. And I'm going to put it back in a flour mixture. Y'all, by the way, I used roughly about one to two cups of milk in there. As you can see, this chicken gobbled up the majority of the milk of what was left. So right here, we go ahead and take the chicken that has been double dipped and begin putting it into, into the cooking grease, the cooking oil, not grease, but vegetable oil is what I'm using. If you got peanut oil, which costs an arm and a leg, use it. It's it's uh, the, makes delicious chicken. I could have put more flour on that other side, so I'm just trying to do the best that I can. And here it goes. Let's pour this one out right here. And now I got to bring up the temperature of the ch of the grease. Let's see. Bring that back up, and I'll get that cleaned up later. And I believe I got one more leg in here. <clears throat> you want to be very careful, as you can see the grease getting higher here. But there you go. And, yep, that completes that. I have a mess to clean up. And...
be right back while I just one moment while I get this mess cleaned up over here. And I'm going to put my seasonings back in there, back in the cabinet. I'm trying my best to pause this video, y'all. My fingers is wet. Come on, please pause. It's not allowing me to pause it. I don't want to do a third video. The blood of Jesus. Say, the Lord rebuke you. Okay, I see what we're dealing with. I have an entity on here bothering with my stuff, so I'm going to have to get this cleaned up later. It's not allowed. Y'all, this entity is so desperate. It would not allow me to pulse part two so that I can continue and flip this over and get things cleaned up. I even dried my hands off, y'all. I even set it down on the surface. I want you all to see the results of the double dipped coated chicken batter in milk and um, in the milk mixture here. This is the Andy's Hot and Spicy Mix, as I pointed out in part one and part two. I wanted this all in one video, y'all. This is gonna be part three. And I'm going to try to make it as quick as possible. These are the one that was single dip. You want to make sure all of that blood is cooked out. So use a pitchfork to pinch it. You see how I lift that up? You don't need no chicken that's running with red blood. If it has red blood, then that means the inside is not done. You, you do not take it out just because it's brown. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip this back over again on the other side. It's, it's not done until... The red blood is not running in it anymore. And so I'm going to flip this over again. And you want to make sure, because you're cooking with cast iron. Now, if you got a deep fryer, it's going to cook evenly. This is the single dipped flour, the first batch that I did right here. The, this one, one, two, and three. These are... The ones that I dipped twice in the milk mixture that has a double batter. So let's get this one flipped over. And I, I showed you all this in part two. And I do apologize. You know, um, I need to get a camera with a tripod, a stand on it. Or hire me a cameraman if I win a, you know, if I'm able to do so in the future or something. Y'all, that's that came off. Don't, you know, that right there... When it came off, it doesn't mean the chicken isn't going to be good. This can happen because the chicken is actually, the pan is actually overcrowded. I should have fried three to four pieces at a time. So if you don't want your batter to come off, don't fry too many at one time. And watch your, your grease temperature. So you want it to be cooking, but you also want it to be done from inside out. This is double coated. And this one right here, I noticed that the breading wasn't too well on it, but it still should be good because it's seasoned very well with or without breading. So don't panic. To avoid this happening, fry only three to four pieces at a time. Don't crowd your skillet. Let this be a lesson learned. So y'all, I'm gonna go ahead and fry up the rest of my chicken and I won't be doing a taste test on this, on this video. This is part three, I won't be doing that. But this is just my, um, I rarely fry chicken anymore, but this is my take on fried chicken. And then I don't always do hot and spicy. 
So you don't have to make hot and spicy chicken. It can be just all the other seasoning with all the extra Tabasco sauce and things. Like I showed you in part one, I actually used some Tabasco sauce and the milk mixture. You can use Louisiana hot sauce. And I also used grounded red pepper. That's the powdered one right there. And all of these other seasonings that I already pointed out. Portrait seasoning to help give it that KFC taste. Um, the ground cinnamon was placed directly in the flour and not the milk mixture. And all the other seasoning were put, put inside of the, the milk mixture and it was also put in the bag, um, Ziploc bag of flour and corn with cornstarch andes mix and things. So you want to make sure that your chicken is seasoned very well. I'm going to end this video and I'm going to get my kitchen all cleaned up. I was trying to pause it. This joker would not. My Y'all, the, the device, when I kept pressing it, it was almost like it was taking pictures and stuff, and it was like blinking in and out, like, you know, so I forgot to turn off the Wi-Fi before I began filming. I have an entity that literally comes through on the phone, like, um, it can come through at any time, but when we get near, like, 30-something, 40-something minutes after the hour, it be doing some weird stuff like opening up screens and stuff. You know, I got VPN. Sometimes I don't turn on the VPN. I do have security on my phone, but y'all to no able. So I'm going to go ahead and get this fried up. And I'm going to, actually I've been having a taste for like some fried chicken and mashed potatoes with gravy. So that's what I will be having with this. I'm not going to make it complicated. Just some mashed potatoes and some, and some brown gravy and some fried chicken that's what that's what we're having tonight